Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we take a closer look at our favorite day in the life stories from across the country. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. A day in the life are some of our favorite stories during the show each week. And today, we take a closer look at our favorite farm and ranch stories from across the country. In these volatile economic times, many cattlemen are finding unique ways to improve their profitability. Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Mandy Carr Johnson has more from Alabama. Every cattle operation isn't known just for cattle. Many like Sunshine Farms in central Alabama wear many hats and they all seem to fit. I was born into it in 1940 and been in peaches ever since then except for a few years that I was in service. Uh, we ventured into tomatoes and, and then my son got old enough we, we got into the cattle and, and uh, then he started a U-Pick strawberry operation about 15 years ago and we're still in that. We have people drive for 150 miles from here to come pick these strawberries, uh, bring their kids, grandkids. Uh, we, we only have six acres, but you know, on that six acres, there's over 100,000 plants. So you go to counting strawberries per plant, it can add up to a lot of strawberries in a year's time. Sunshine Farms has strawberries, tomatoes, peach trees, horses, and even an entertainment farm in the fall. But when the decision was made to get more serious about cattle, it was made deliberately. In 93, I was a county agent here, and Tim Miner came in and wanted to sort of do a little different in the cattle operation instead of running commercial cattle. And I'd been involved in the genetic side of cattle business uh, for many years and recommended doing a crossbreeding with a Simmental and Angus, primarily to make females for the ideal brood cow for this part of the world. So we bought 30 Angus cows and started crossing them, and uh, we started keeping the bulls and selling them for. Uh, herd size for the commercial guys and the female they just didn't decide not to sell any so they kept them and built a herd up to almost 400 head and we started a bull sale in 1998. We are the largest Simmental breeder in the state of Alabama in terms of numbers registered. We've had the highest average in yearling bull sale of all breeds in the southeast now for four or five years so we just uh, we invite folks to come and we think we got a product that'll help people throughout the beef industry. And it's not just about the products at Sunshine Farms, it's about the people. I started here in 2001 when I come out of college and have been here since. Uh, I'm not genetically family, but we, they treat me like family. We all eat Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner together, so uh, raise, we're ra I'm raising my kids on the farm. And that's like I said, we're all family that, that work here. It's a people thing. You know, we, we are very blessed with uh, the people that work with us. So. We're, we're very sincere when we talk about people don't work for us, the employees, they, they work with us. Uh, we're all kind of partners in this thing because if, uh, you know, if any part of it fails, we all kind of lose. We're very diversified and our jobs change day to day. My main job is cattle and horses and livestock, but I know that one day I could be thinning peach trees or picking strawberries and spraying them. So it's just a day to day change. We have a meeting every morning before any of us go to the field. We all meet and decide what, who's going which way today. And uh, it's something you, you run through your head every night and they do the same thing and then we sort it out the next morning and go do it. And uh, it's, it, it makes it a lot easier. Whether it's fruit or cattle, it takes a broad vision and a positive outlook to be successful. If you're not optimistic, you couldn't stand this pressure, I don't think, from the day-to-day -day work. But in a thing, peaches, uh, they set a tree and it's four years before it's in production and hopes to, to last 10 to 12 years. So when you set a tree, you're looking 15 years down the road. When we breed cattle, we're looking two years down the road to get the product on land. If it's a female, hopefully she'll last 10 years. So anything we do, we're looking 12 to 15 years down the road. To achieve anything, you gotta be, be prepared to dabble on the boundary of disaster. We dabble every day. 
Uh, when somebody tells you it's not about money, you can bet it's always about the money. You gotta have it to make things happen out here. But I can grant you this too, and I firmly believe this, if you forget about your people along the way, uh, you're destined for failure. If you surround yourself with good folks, good things are gonna happen. Oh, you work hard and you pray hard, good things are happen. Durbin says working outside and being your own boss is a reward in itself. It's just something that we love. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of like getting, smelling plowed ground, uh, uh, smelling these blooms, these blossoms when they're out here. And, and to see a ripe peach and to see a kid sitting on the strawberry bed picking a U-Pick strawberry with juice running off their elbows, it, it's, it's that type of stuff. Reporting from Sunshine Farms in Central Alabama, I'm Mandy Carr Johnson for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We love featuring America's Cattlemen on our show. Send us your story ideas. Just email us at cattlemen to cattlemen at beef.org or find us on Facebook by searching for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Family is a driving force behind many successful operations, but one ranch in Bruno, Idaho is seven generations in the making and still going strong. Reporter Brian Baxter explains how their hard work and determination create a rich family lifestyle. Western way of ranching business is to build off the heritage that you uh, that you have and be able to pass it on to the next generation. One look at this beautiful landscape in Bruno, Idaho, and it's easy to understand why the Collier family has been ranching in this area for over 130 years. Well, it all began in 1876. My great grandfather came out here from Cambridge, Ohio, with his family. I was raised as a little kid, what's now under the water of the house, original house. We moved over up out of there in 1936 and bought a ranch, and that part is still incorporated in this ranch, and then we added other ranches to it. While the landscape has changed over time with the addition of a reservoir, there's one thing that has stayed the same, the importance of family. Four generations of Colliers ranging in age from three months to 86 years old live together on the ranch. We're very lucky to have my mom and dad uh, here on the ranch, uh, still very active in the operation. Kyle got married and decided to come back and continue the operation. Him and his wife Bobby uh, live here as well as their two kids Piper and Cruz and then of course, Sherry and I and, and uh, my daughter Katie's actively involved as well. It's nice that my daughter can, you know, run down the hill and go down and see my grandparents and then she can run up to my mom and dad's in the, in the same amount of time. Hardly a week goes by that we don't all get together and eat meals together and, and um, somebody fixes some for each other and we have a lot of camaraderie of ship right in our own family. Along with a strong family connection comes a love for the ranch that's passed down from generation to generation. When I was in college, I used to call home once a day to find out not so much about how everybody was doing, but how the cattle were doing or, or what was happening on the, on the ranch on a daily basis. I mean, it, it's one thing that seems like it's just kind of bred into you a little bit. As the Collier family grows, so does their operation. But no matter what changes, they hope Hereford cattle will always remain at the heart of the ranch. The real plus for Hereford cattle is the efficiency and their ability to adapt under uh, harsh range conditions. That's always been their strength. I guess uh, feet and legs and structure on the cattle and their ability to travel. We've always had Herf Hereford cattle. We had commercial Herefords. Uh, I can remember a time that we wouldn't see a black, a black one on this ranch. Back in, uh, oh, about 1976, Sherry and I got married and we kind of changed the operation from a commercial operation, went to purebred Herefords. And then in 92, we have uh, sold the commercial part of the operation and then started uh, with some Angus and uh, got in the registered Angus business as well. 
the two breeds really complement each other and it's interesting um, since we've had both of the cattle to, to figure out the strengths and weaknesses of both breeds and, uh, and then actually then you, it makes you understand why those two breeds need to be crossed. Their expertise is paying off big. The Colliers have won many top awards from cattle shows around the country. We've been really lucky, you know, in the in the past probably 10 years in at the National Western Stock Show, which is kind of our Super Bowl of cattle shows, if you will. You know, we had two bulls that were two-time national champions in back-to-back -back years, and that's pretty rare. You know, we've been able to have a couple, uh, two or three national champion females as well. Although their roots date back to the 1800s, the Collier family uses modern technology to help out on their big annual sale day and to meet the ever-changing needs of their customers. Our big, big payday is sale day. We normally have two to three hundred people at the ranch uh, sale day and, and we try to offer about 150 to 170 bulls, uh, usually 50 or 60 females as well. We have quite a few people that uh, feel comfortable enough with our program that they're able to, to uh, stay at home and bid over the internet and uh, we stand behind our cattle and they uh, know the reputation of what they'll do and, and uh, so they don't have to travel uh, like they have in the past. No matter what changes lay ahead of them, the Collier family hopes one thing will never change, living their daily lives together on the ranch. You have a different mentality, I guess, when you wake up in the morning. You're not working from 9 to 5 and go home and you don't care about what happens the rest of the day. You're, you, you have a lot more invested interest in, in what you're doing. Since it is a family operation, it sure enough makes you care just a little bit more. Reporting from the Collier, Hereford, and Angus Ranch in Bruno, Idaho, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Join other cattlemen and cattlewomen like the Collier family as members of NCBA. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. We'll be right back. Quality matters to us because we're entrusted with the safe transportation of animals. Those animals can represent generations of hard work. It's up to us to deliver the goods that drive the beef industry. We link all the segments of the beef industry together, passing the torch of quality from one business to the next. Consumers count on us to bring the quality that starts on the family ranch to their home. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. Try it for 60 days and let's see the difference it'll make in your animal. When you have an all-in-one feed, it makes all the difference in the world. It's, it's been a very good product for us. But my chickens are really great layers and I think that's because of how I feed them. They look more complete, they fill out really well. You get exceptional gain, you get exceptional growth. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Take the 60-day challenge and save up to $55 on Purina feed. Sign up at PurinaDifference.com. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. You take pride in the beef you raise. Countless hours invested to assure a safe and wholesome calf crop. Why trust that calf crop to just anyone? Experience the new Dinklage difference with a long history and reputation for outstanding performance and cattle care. We use a combination of cutting edge technologies and data driven decision making to establish our place as leaders in the cattle feeding industry. Allow Dinklage to be a part of your team in the quest to maximize your profits with five locations to serve you in Wyoming, Nebraska and Colorado. For more information on the new Dinklage difference, stop by one of our yards or visit us on the web at DinklageFeedYards.com. Welcome back. Making a history lesson entertaining can be quite a challenge, especially when you're trying to keep the attention of young children. Luckily, an event at the Fort Worth Stockyards is playing a vital role in bringing history to life. Reporter Justin Field explains. 
Fort Worth stockyards quickly become a classroom as kids of all ages gather around a campfire for cow camp, a fun event designed to teach kids about life during the times of cattle drives. These are things that most people don't see on an everyday basis. Uh, if you go to most cowboy reenactments, you see a gunfight, you know, people getting shot, people falling down. What we actually do in the cow camp is we bring it down to an even lower level to what the drover actually did. The younger kids, when they were just barely able to uh, get into their teens, uh, actually going up the trail, the hardships that they actually went through. Drover Jerry Eastman joined the herd in 2008 with one goal in mind, to bring history to life. That's some of the hardships that they actually had on the trail. They, what we actually do is we talk about the chuck wagon, what, what happened on the trail with the chuck wagon, why the chuck wagon's here, what the drovers were doing. We talk about the roping and how they roped uh, the horses and the steers because most people just see it on a rodeo. And then we actually have them watch them in the arena and we actually have interaction out in the arena where we do the branding, talking about the whips and why we use whips, why we brand cattle and, and how the trail was actually done. The drovers work hard to paint the picture of just how difficult life was for cowboys nearly 150 years ago. It's not the glamorous gunfight, oh, the cowboy gets the girl and gets to go home with her at night, or gets to go out and you know pet his horse and sit up on the ridge and look out over all his vast land. He's actually out having to work to do what he's got to do. With two to 3,000 head of cattle, there was probably only 15 to 20 drovers that went up the trail with them. They had to ride back and forth quite a bit. They had to depend on each other was gone and we had some downtime which was not a lot because we're in the saddle 16 to 18 hours a day. It just takes us back to how, how hard they worked and the crafts that they did back then and, and what they did to help um, to help the farmers, to help the ranchers and, and probably how we don't utilize our time very well today. The values were there, the morals were there and obviously taking millions of uh, head of cattle up in the 20 some odd years that they took them up there certainly added a lot of the uh, values and morals that established the cowboy and the cowboy life. But as the drovers point out, life for a cowboy isn't all that different today. A lot of the people that live in cities don't understand that real cowboys today are actually out on ranches sitting out there with the cattle uh, in a lonesome area just by themselves the way it was actually done 150, 200 years ago. With so many demonstrations, everyone who attended cow camp learned something new. Your saddle is made out of a tree. I didn't know that either. And the things you put your feet in, they are made out of wood, but leather is covering them. Even those who are young at heart went home with some interesting facts on hand. Well, I didn't realize that the spurs did as much as that they did as far as helping the cows move. I thought it just, you just popped them once and that's what made them go. Jerry hopes that everyone leaves with a better understanding of the history of cattle drives, and he hopes to continue educating people of all ages for many years to come. If we don't keep our past and remember our past, we're gonna lose it. And it's great to see all these kids come out here. I'm actually at my dream job now. I get to dress like a real cowboy. I get to ride a horse. I get to uh, move cattle down the street. I get to talk about history. So this is really a dream job. I hope that the people, that when they leave here, have an appreciation of what the, their forefathers basically had. It's a life experience. that You can learn more about animals you love. And that puts a smile on everyone's face. Give that camera a little, Jackson. Come out with that camera. <laughs> right. Reporting from the stockyards in Fort Worth, Texas, I'm Justin Field for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. What a great way to teach kids a lesson. Stay Whether you're a cow-calf producer, feedlot owner, stocker, or packer, Every segment of the beef industry is as important as the next. And one family in Bartow, Florida is taking that to heart. Reporter Brian Baxter shows us what one family is doing to support the beef industry in a variety of ways. When we come to this particular ranch, we love to get up early and sit on the porch and watch the rest of the ranch wake up. The Putnam family has been in the cattle and citrus business for over a century. And as their love for ranching continues to grow, so do their operations. Well, the orange operation is all in one county. 
Polk County in Central Florida. And it's a uh, little over 900 acres. And the cattle operation is in three counties and it amounts to about between seven and 8,000 acres. It's all commercial cattle, Brangus, Brayford, all Brahma influenced cattle. It takes a lot of hard work, dedication, and family support to keep a ranch going strong, and no one knows that better than the Putnams. We have four children, and we've been blessed with 12 grandchildren. They all enjoy coming and enjoying the ranch. Well, it's a tremendous feeling to see your family involved. They're all interested. Uh, my oldest son is pretty much running our operation now, and his sister is running the business part from the office. Even the youngest family members can be found hard at work on the operation. This one's in kindergarten, so he's still to where he can take a day off of school and come help every time we work. We usually work for two weeks at a time, but I'll let him get out for one day of those and come down here and help us because he, he loves to be here. Robbie is our next youngest grandson and he does love to come and ride and he feels like he is an important part of the team when they work cows. While many members of the Putnam family work on the ranch every day, their son Adam was determined to bring the common sense values he learned growing up to Capitol Hill. Well, I have no idea where his interest came from in politics, but he's always had it ever since he was a little boy and started off in 4-H. And he's been to the uh, Florida legislature at 21, starting at 21, straight from the University of Florida, and uh, went from there to Congress. And he's been there eight, 10 years, and now he's wanting to come back to Florida and be the commissioner of agriculture. And beyond that, I'm scared to ask. Uh, I felt like young people had a, a seat, at, should have a seat at the table, but didn't. And so I was, uh, I was pretty young when I first ran for the state house. And uh, my mother managed the campaign from the kitchen table. And uh, uh, everybody else in my family thought I was crazy. In 2001, at the age of 26, Congressman Adam Putnam became one of the youngest members of Congress in history, working hard to fight issues that his family and cattlemen across the country face on a daily basis. The biggest threats to, to the future of agriculture in America are man-made threats. Uh, they're, they're rooted in foolish public policies that limit access to, to water and resources. They infringe on private property rights. And the most glaring one is the death tax, which uh, strikes at the heart of the ability of a family that works together multiple generations shoulder to shoulder. It, you know, there's just no way if the state taxes continue like they are that we could hold something like this together. And it, it would be a shame to have to sell off part of this just to pay taxes. So, and it's not right. It's, uh, you know, we pay taxes on our income every year and uh, there's just no reason for us to have to pay a tax just because one of us dies. There's nothing more important than the estate tax or doing away with it. Um, the only way to preserve large acreage and keep them beautiful is either with families or government owned. And in our state, the government owned lands are not being maintained properly. Even though Congressman Putnam is currently representing cattlemen in Washington, D.C., his parents, Dudley and Sally, have always encouraged their friends and family to stand up and speak out. I think you should express your concerns to your lawmakers and to your state representatives and legislators. And if you don't get involved, the general public won't know what your problems are or help you solve things that you need their help on. And they won't understand what you go through every day to make sure that they have good, safe food on their tables. And when it comes to setting policy, Congressman Putnam believes young people with a background in agriculture must be involved. We really have to rally behind these young, these young cattlemen, these young professionals uh, who, who are willing to step up and be a part of public life, whether it's serving on a water management board, whether it's serving in the state legislature, or coming to Washington to serve in the Congress. We have to identify those who have a real background in, in ranching and agriculture 
if we lose that perspective in public policy making, uh, no one will fill that void except the people who are telling the opposite side of our story. After 10 years of serving in Washington, D.C., Congressman Putnam is ready to return to his roots. I've decided not to, uh, not to run for re-election here in Washington. I've decided to, uh, to, to go back home to my state uh, to, uh, to seek the office of Commissioner of Agriculture, where I will be focused 100 percent on the issues that are closest to my heart. And Congressman Putnam is also looking forward to giving his children the chance to experience life on the ranch. The opportunity to, um, as a kid, to, to be out there either on a three-wheeler or, or in a Jeep or uh, on horseback and, and have that experience is something that's very special to me. And, uh, and I want my children to have that same experience. And when you are um, you know, managing lives, the lives of, of, uh, of animals and, uh, and helping bring them into this world and, uh, and, and understanding what goes into to, to helping make the human condition an improved one. Um, I, think it, I think it develops great kids and it great, develops great Americans. Reporting from Putnam Groves in Bartow, Florida, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Rest assured, we'll continue to follow Congressman Putnam's Florida race and bring you details on future editions of our show. We'll be right back. Draxon, clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death laws. Man, with Drax, and we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Trade shows provide a broad spectrum of products for attendees, but one particular booth at the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association trade show was aimed at the younger crowd. Reporter Matt Fleck tells us how a toy maker has captured the attention of kids of all ages. Twelve years ago, Jerry Sims searched the stores to find a toy livestock shoot for his kids. When he came up empty-handed, he decided to make one himself. My two little boys, they were 12 or two and three years old. They wanted a blue doctrine shoot, and uh, I built the chute, a tub, and the snake. And then every year for Christmas or birthday, they needed more things, so we just kept building toys. And then the neighbors wanted something, and it's just kind of grown from there. That's when Jerry started his own business called the Happy Toy Maker, located where else but Happy Texas. I build metal toys, personalized toys for kids. So it's all made out of 3 8 rods and 16 gauge metal. It's all welded together. We have a computerized plasma torch that we put their kids' names, brands, and things in. I like kids. It's neat to watch them play. No matter what kind of ranch toy you're looking for, chances are Jerry makes it. I have a pickup and trailer, and the pickup picks up a wooden round bale. It's got a cake box on it, grill guard, and it's got a little 16 inch half top single axle trailer. I make a feedlot, I make a semi truck with a cattle trailer. I've got two sizes of rodeo arenas, a uh, processing chute, a set of wheel corrals, and we're fixing to start making the cattle that fit this size. 
Not only are the toys indestructible, but they're also handcrafted and made to teach kids what it's like to work with real life equipment. They'll never tear them up and they work like the real thing. The overhead cake bins, you know, everything, the mechanisms, it just shows a kid what it's gonna be like when they get older. They can pinch their fingers like they will in real life. Everything, I try to make it work like it is for the big people so that they, it's a, a learning tool for them so that when they do get older, they'll know how to shut a gate, and open a gate, work a chute, you know, how things drive. In addition to making cattle that kids can brand themselves, Jerry has a few other new toys coming down the pipeline. We've added some stuff to our semis. We'll be able to sell an attachment that goes on the back of them for like a feed mixer, uh, manure spreader, water truck, you know. They'll all attach right to the frame of the truck so they, they can kind of add to their trucks that they've already bought. For now, the happy toy maker, well, he couldn't be happier. I like to sell things for people that they'll always have, you know, that just doesn't tear up. Everybody said, well, those will be passed down from generation to generation. Reporting from the TSCRA trade show in Fort Worth, Texas, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Welcome back. Just east of the Colorado foothills, one cattleman is putting his own stamp on crossbreeding. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter spends a day in the life of Willie Altenberg. From the front range in northern Colorado to the Wyoming border sits the Altenburg Super Baldy Ranch owned by Willie and Sharon Altenburg. With 175 seed stock cows, the Altenbergs have established a business that combines customer focus, attention to animals, business acumen, and neighbor relations. My wife and I own it, and uh, we've been in this business about 30 years, and it's um, seed stock where we sell bulls. We have an annual bull sale, and then we sell females as well and uh, we have our bull sale third Saturday of March, and that's our primary emphasis, is to sell bulls to commercial operations. The Altenburg operation has been carefully developed over time. We put heavy emphasis on AI, and so we wanted to get into the seed stock business, and so with the Simmental, you could use an upgrading program, and uh, so through AI, we upgraded through the half-blood, three-quarter purebred operation with Simmental and, and that's how we decided to get in and it's uh, worked very well and then we incorporated Angus into it and now we do what we call the Super Baldy which is the half blood, half Angus, half Simmental. The Simmental of the yellow tags, the Angus, both red and black, are the red tags and the white tags are the F1s, the, the Simmental Angus uh, crossbred. And we sell bulls of all three breeds of all three breed makeups, if you will. And we do not maintain the F1 female here. We sell those, they're in great, great demand uh, because people just love the F1 female. And of course, that's the advantage of the hybrid vigor. So we have a bull sale in the spring, as we indicated, and we sell um, Simmental bulls, uh, F1 bulls, and then we sell Primarily for calving ease, we sell the Angus both red and black for calving ease bulls. And we sell about 70, 75 bulls each year. It's a model the Altenbergs have found success with and have been able to grow as more technologies entered the beef breeding business. We use embryo transfer and we use cooperator herds and we bring in outside bulls from cooperator herds due to embryo transfer and, and, and outside bulls. and so. Um, we, we do a pretty aggressive embryo transfer and, and AI program uh, to make all that happen. We think it helps the commercial cattlemen. Um, it's exciting to see the, the cattlemen come to our bull sale and, and attest to what it does do. Um, the crossbreeding, um, the hybrid vigor that it adds to the, to the commercial cattle industry, um, how, the, how the cattle work. 
um, not only in the feedlot sector and the packing sector, or just how the continental complements the English, but then how it works um, for the cow-calf part of it. I mean, they really, really like the females. The key, Altenberg says, is keeping your eye on the bottom line of your operation. You have to do everything in your power to, to watch your costs to maintain profitability, and that's one of the things that, that crossbreeding helps you do, is to take advantage of, and it, it may not be a free lunch as people talk about, but crossbreeding does help you take advantage of, of your costs. We try to do things the old-fashioned way. We trail the cattle back from the ranch. We have the opportunity to do that because we only have to cross a couple ranches. But it's about, depending upon where they are in the summer range, it's about a 12 to 18 mile trail back from the ranch. We only have to cross a couple neighbors to get that done. Um, but, but we like to do our work horseback because it keeps the cattle much quieter. And we it takes a little longer and and it's maybe a little slower, but the cattle are really, we, we work really hard on disposition, and, um, and it cuts the bill down on the trucking. The Altenbergs have found their operation is deeply rooted in the community. We work closely with our neighbors. Um, we see it as an opportunity. Um, we get people that come by and, and they stop and they ask questions about our cattle, and we view that as an opportunity instead of a, a, a problem. In other words, we'll take families out and talk about our calving and, and what goes on in the industry and um, we sell some freezer beef because of it. Among the costs Altenberg sees as necessary are his memberships in the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and the Colorado Cattlemen's Association. It's just one of those checks that you just need to write every year because it's a very, very important part of our operation. I, I'm, I'm not able to make every meeting in the state or, or uh, on a national basis, but, but I look forward to the, to the NCBA and CCA representing me on a, on a national and a state basis because th they represent my interests. In Wellington, Colorado, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Join tens of thousands of cattlemen like Willie Altenberg as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. To do so, call us at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit beefusa.org. And we'll be right back. I'm an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member because NCBA is on Capitol Hill taking care of our needs while we are out in the fields taking care of our animals and our land. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member because as a fifth generation cattle producer, the NCBA provides a unified voice for all the cattle industry. You should be an NCBA member for what the Washington staff does day in day out on Capitol Hill, making sure that your voice is heard by members of Congress and that we maintain your livelihood and our ability to produce food for this country and for the world. I am an NCBA member. Join me today. Every family has important traditions throughout the year, but for one family operation in Weatherford, Texas, branding is the main event that brings everyone together. Reporter Brian Baxter explains how a strong family connection helps leave a legacy. T.B. Saunders the first came to Texas in 1850. And uh, my great-grandfather, uh, who came with him, he was five years old. And uh, he uh, rode a horse all the way uh, out of Mississippi to Texas when they settled in Gonzales County. And uh, they drove a small herd of cattle. Tom B. Saunders IV and his family have been in the ranching business for six generations. Hard work and determination are values that have defined the Saunders family from the beginning. Times was really tough. My great great uncle and his brother Jack was told by their mother to take uh, eight steers and 
trade them south and see if they couldn't trade them for something. And when they got back, they had like uh, five pounds of coffee. They had uh, three place settings of silverware, which that was really rare, and some cups and some spurs and some bits. And uh, oh, she was just tickled to death, you know, that they got so much plunder with, with eight head of cattle. With all their cattle experience, the Saunders family was instrumental in establishing the Fort Worth Stockyards. My grandfather was the first cattle dealer to go to Fort Worth. And uh, that was in 1902, and, and uh, we were there 75 years. And I closed the office down right after my dad passed away in 75. So, you know, we, we were the at Fort Worth Stockyards from the time it started till the time it ended. Today, Tom's son, Thomas Saunders V, and the rest of his family help run Saunders Twin V Ranch in Weatherford, Texas. I'm from the leg that comes from T.B. Saunders III. So he bought this ranch in 1934, and he put this place together here in uh, Parker County, and he gave it a brand, and that brand is the Twin V that you see now. Uh, on the front of the barn. It's two V's, one on top of the other, and the, the V stood for, uh, his wife uh, was named Virginia, and then his sister was named Vanita. So that's where the two V's came from. And family is just as important now as it was 150 years ago, so much so that not even spring break can keep the youngest members away. Spring break, we try to, uh, use all the free help that we can get. All the kids come in, it's Brandon time here. I can't miss Brandon, it's the biggest part of all of it. I just feel like I'm missing out if I don't come back. <laughs> We're on spring break and um, spring break every year we get together and all of us come up and we brand the cattle and work them and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and branding is one tradition that will stay in the family for many years to come. Everybody gets to come and help, and you're all kind of cracking jokes and having fun, and everybody's together. Run out there and throw one down and give me shots, and it's good to go. The morals and values that define the early Saunders family members have been instilled in each generation. It's a wonderful experience to have everyone here um, and help everybody, and you're all close. I live right by my grandparents. I get to see them all the time, and they're a big influence on me and who I am, and it's wonderful. And uh, my three kids raised here, and I got two girls and a boy, and of course they all uh, like to work cattle, and they all ride, and they all live here on the ranch. We've been fortunate, and uh, had a lot of fun doing it. This is just the richest way of life for us. Just everybody's here. I mean, look at them. Everybody's having fun, and I really do feel like, uh, Inheritance is something that you borrow from your children. And so I'm glad to have them here. It means the world. I mean, to just be out here and be able to take a deep breath and ride good horses and watch the kids. Along with strong family values, the Saunders also attribute their hard work and perseverance to the success and longevity of their operation. Well, success is a uh... It's like my dad always said, you know, the cow business is really not a business, it's just a way of life. And uh, so you just do like the old boys is going up the trail when you hit hard weather, you know, you, you put your slicker on and kept on going. Same way in the cattle business, you know, when you hit hard times, you just suck it up and keep it rolling and hope for a good one. We've got a long legacy of being up and being down. My family's been at it a long time and we're Lucky to say that we've just dug in and, and held on. For Leslie and Madeline, Saunders Ranch has always been a big part of their lives, and they hope it's also a big part of their future. We're not going far. We'll be here. I feel best on the back of a horse, and that's just what I do. I plan to keep it with me as long as I can. And each generation is just as excited as the next. Saunders Ranch! <laughs> Reporting from Saunders Ranch in Weatherford, Texas, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Do you know of an interesting cattle operation that should be featured on Cattleman to Cattleman? Contact us at c2c at beef.org.
We'll be right back. Quality hay starts with quality equipment. That's why it pays to go with the long green line. Get the hay tools you need to tackle everything from the first cutting through the last bale of the season. Choose John Deere and get quality that lasts, reliability that stands the test of time, and resale value you can take to the bank. All backed by the finest dealer network in the land, John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Get zero for 48 or big cash discounts on select John Deere hay equipment through August 1st. There's never been a better time to trade. See your local John Deere dealer soon. From Iraq and Afghanistan, our brave warriors are coming home, wounded. Some with wounds you can see, some with wounds you can't see. Wounded Warrior Project was created to support our men and women coming off the battlefield. Please help carry these warriors the rest of the way home. Get involved at WoundedWarriorProject.org. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. There are two things you need to know about Sweet Licks. Number one, they offer a complete line of vitamin, mineral, protein, and medicated nutritional supplements. And number two, they're available in a variety of forms and sizes. What you need, how you need it. For your nearest dealer, just pick up your cone and call 187-SWEET LICKS. That's with an X. Profitability never tasted so sweet. remember how many of my songs Martin wrote? Probably half. I guess nobody knew me as well as Martin. There was a lot of times I took him with me. He was real popular during the fall cow works on the big ranches. We'd be there three or four days. After we'd eaten, we'd play music and tell stories in the cookhouse. Man, it was fun. Cowboys liked it too. These outfits were out so far there wasn't no television or satellite TV. <laughs> places with Martin, I wouldn't go without a gun. We stayed late. I've had to go back and rescue him a time or two. I remember how sad he looked in the middle of a vacant parking lot one early morning. He'd spent the night there all alone. Well, his case was pretty shabby, mostly duct tape. He's ridden in boats, on pack mules, shopping carts, and railroad trains. I taught him how to stand up. People would marvel at his balance. He fell off a three-foot ledge one time and broke his neck just below the tuners. I got him home and put him back together with two machine bolts and some Elmer's glue. He could still carry a tune. These days, we mostly just play along with the radio or drum an old song one of us remembers. He's aging well, getting a little mellow. Wish I could say that about myself. Well, my kids are musical, so I guess they'll be around a long time. As long as these machine bolts and Elmer's glue holds out. This is Baxter Black from out there. Baxter Black and Martin. Comprehensive. 
practical, powerful. Now's the time to put the power of DNA to work in your herd with the comprehensive Igenity Profile. The inside information from Igenity can help you make more confident replacement heifer and herd sire selection decisions, add marketability to your feeder cattle, make faster genetic progress, and more. The best time to get started is when you're already working cattle during branding, weaning, or bull soundness exams. Get started today. Visit Igenity.com or call 1-877-IGENITY to put the power of DNA to work in your herd. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's a television show by cattlemen for cattlemen. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks for joining us. Each week, join host Kevin Oxner for the latest in beef cattle news, market analysis, and producer education. Cattlemen won't want to miss an episode. Debuting Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on RFD-TV or anytime at cattlemen2cattlemen.org. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD-TV.